Welcome to Massa Beers. My name is Matt. We do beer stuff here. Mostly reviews. Some of our favorite reviews are, is old timey beer. Got a little bit of five year old jams right now. The brewery, Melange number no. three. Quick note one of my favorite beers of all time. Honestly, from what I remember, I just remember Melange 3 just being absolutely fantastic. It is a ale and bourbon barrels. We'll get to the whole details. This is the 2017 edition. I believe the one that I fell in love with was maybe a 2014-15 edition. But it's still some 50 status. Brewery-esque. It comes courtesy of my boy Ben. Uh, on my way up to Beer Tube Palooza, I spent the afternoon with my buddy Ben. We had some food. We had some laughs. He bestowed a epic bomb of malty old jams on me and this is in there so we're gonna review it what does it say in the bottle <clears throat> it says the brewery uh, melange number three uh ale uh, agent burn barrel so it's their black tuesday our anniversary ale in our wheat wine style intertwined intertwined in this time-tested exploration in the art of blend 16.3 session beers uh, on the back here, we have um, our Milan series is at the core of our experimentation uh, with flavors that cannot be achieved outside of the art of the blend or by any one beer. This one is our original melange at its very finest. Melange number three is a blend of three ales with the longest lineage in our bourbon barrel age program. Black Tuesday, our anniversary series, old ale, and our wheat style ale, wheat wine style ale. Uh, store and serve at 55 degrees in a tulip or wine glass. So I got a stemless wine glass. It is, I'll tell you right now how cold it is. It is 53 degrees. Because that's what my fridge is at right now. So I think we're just about perfect. Um, I'm excited. I am, man. I just love this beer. Do I have a little quirky thing? I had that one quart. I don't know where my little I brought, brought beer tube of blues is. I don't know where I put it. I'll find it. Actually, I think it's outside my kitchen. I think I washed it. Um, I've been hitting these uh, brewery, old school brewery jams quite a bit. The, um, I can't get this started, so I'm going to have to start it with this. Actually, what am I doing? I can just pop this cap off. I don't have to pull that thing. Dummy, I'm gonna end up hurt myself. Oh man, I forgot. Oh Jesus Christ! Did I, hopefully I didn't break the glass. I didn't. Don't do whatever this guy does. There wasn't a big hiss in there unless that cracked. I kind of hit it. But anyway, um, wow. Glass I'm holding right now is dirty. On the outside, not on the inside. Oh, man, look at that carbonation. Oh buddy. Oh buddy boy. I was kind of worried about the carbonation on that, but look at that thing. Five years old. Doo -doo, when I talk about doo-doo water, that'd be the doo-doo water, baby. Um, I love breweries old school labeling. Like just this classic, I mean, from across the room, you know what a brewery beer is. Now they're in cans and stuff, whatever. But even that's probably a better serving style. But um, yeah, love their old school designs. Beer wise, like I said, it is straight up due to water brown. Um, pinky finger of a really kind of unique colored head. It is cream in color, but it has this red tinge to it you typically don't get from beer. Uh, I assume that's a combination of just all those three beers the barrel, maybe the wheat wine, the blonde, and darker beer kind of come together. But yeah, it's got a little red tinge. Probably doesn't really come off on camera all that much, but it just looks like a really well capped. Miller well done, high EBV beer. We're talking barley wine here. It's a blend, but we're talking barley wines. I am excited for a nose. <laughs> Schnauz is a little stuffed. Let's see what we get. <sighs> oh, man. I could just sit here like this. I wonder if I'd get drunk if I just did that. You know, just huffed in those fumes. It's, it is, honestly, it really does bring me back to what really first kind of got my panties on the bunch when it comes to beer. And that, it really comes down to aged, um, aged barley wine, aged old ale, but also, like, even aged, like, 
Belgians, like quads and darks, when they have age on them. And when you're talking about a blend of barrel and wheat wine and all that stuff, you're kind of doing an accelerated faux aging. Um, this really does remind me of some of the better, like, 10 to 15-year-old bottles, your old stocks and your hardies, and those kind of things just has that raisinettiness, that rich kind of red, dark fruitiness with a nice kind of semi-sweet kind of chocolate thing going on. It's a raisinettiness with a touch of sugar daddy. You're getting the bourbon. You're getting a barley wine. You're getting this rich kind of chocolate notes. What I, it's elevated a bit more. More than some of those beers because I think it is the stout portion of the show. I think there is a chocolate component here and it is quite a bit bigger. Man. It just. It's it's just. It's just. I'm diving in. Cheers, y'all. The carbonation on this is insane. For a beer like this. Like it's effervescent. This is a 17% five-year-old barley wine with effervescent carbonation. Here's the thing though, and I will say this, and I, I I'm actually I'm leaning towards this, not leaning, I, this is a positive for me. There is a soft little tart sour note to this that I don't remember having. Is it the barrel? Is it? I don't. It's not an infection, because at five years this would have it would have taken the beer over. I assume it's just a portion of that maybe anniversary their anniversary ales or kind of those pseudo Solera method kind of beers where they put a little bit of the previous years in that. I think it's something along those lines, along with maybe just a little bit of a funky tart barrel. You know, something a little funky tart that's adding this little kind of like almost like Flanders-y kind of red kind of thing to it. It's not Flanders. It's not a tart beer. But there's undertones of that in it. I don't remember being in Melange 3. This is delicious. It is, and I think that, that little tart cherry flanders the thing that i'm really kind of honing in on this elevates this beer to something a bit different is it better than what i remember i'm not gonna say that i'm not gonna go as far as to say that this makes this beer better but i think it's a nice twist that i didn't expect with this particular beer let's get back to the beginning first thing that jumps out is the carbonation way too carbonated for a beer like this i like it though i would prefer my big burly huge gigantic beers to air a little bit high on carb as opposed to a little bit low on carb almost certainly 99 times out of 100 they're low on carb especially when you're talking about a dated beer you get something like this is so rich, is so dense, is so thick, is so heavy. When you get that kind of light and sprightly carbonation, that juxtaposition between having this really old, dense beer, but still have a lot of spirit to it, liveliness to it, I think is a really fun kind of twist. So I really, really do dig that. And I must say the mouthfeel doesn't suffer from it. It doesn't become soft or too light there's a density to it you know you're drinking something big this combination of a raisin net the best way i could put it if you injected a raisin net with a little touch of red wine just a hair like a really soft non-dry red wine that's kind of how this beer is coming off for me. So it's like a, 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 a raisinette soaked in red wine is the best way I could put it. I don't think that would actually pull any red wine into it because of the coating of chocolate. That's why I said inject it, but you get what I'm kind of throwing out there. And that's where this beer kind of lands. So it's this cool kind of just twist on this, what I expected to be this multiple level, multiple faceted, layered, um, like barley wine, wheat wine, blended ale. Just adds this added little touch of this vinous, rich red wine note that for me can be, if it's a little too heavy, it just becomes a little bit too much red wine. As someone who's not a big wine drinker, 
even though there is no red wine in here, it just gives those notes and it comes off in a beautiful, beautiful way because it gives all the traditional barley wine bits and pieces that I have come to love my whole life when it comes to these beers. You know, that again, sure daddy raising it. That whole caramel deep figgy thing that is just in this complex behemoth of a beer, just adding that added complexity, that little bit of cherry flandersy red wine kind of notiness to it that just takes it to a whole other level. This is so fun. Thank you very much, Ben. I am very, very much appreciative and just blown away by the beers that you threw, threw at me. You know, dude texts me. You know, <laughs> still ghosting him because I'm so fucking exhausted. Um, yeah, oh, fucking, I just love it. It's absolutely fantastic. I can't wait. To, I I need to need to calm myself down here. I can't be drinking this whole bottle one night, and I kind of want to. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. And let's put it this way: I've had God, what is this? My fourth or fifth different, sixth different brewery, seven fifty of reasonable age in the past month. I found three locally, had one appear to Palooza, um, I had this one just now. This might be my second favorite of the bunch. I think that first chocolate rain. So I brought, um, I reviewed, um, no, Mocha Wednesday. I viewed Mocha Wednesday and Grey Monday on my channel. I, both of them were stellar. They were both 2014s, I believe. Um, and uh, Mocha Wednesday won for me. Um, I brought, I went to back to the place to purchase them to bring the beer to blues and I didn't even realize there were different dates and I think I brought a 2013 or 14 green money and then a 2015 Mug Wednesday and then Mug Wednesday was not the same beer so the green Monday were one at beer two blues uh, but the Mug Wednesday I had here is number one on my list this is a very very close second and just a very tasty beer and it always tastes a little bit better when friends pay it forward in fucking shock and awe fashion like Benjamin did. So thank you very much, brother. So there you go. Well, no, melange number three. I'm really curious to see if anybody out there has had these as of late. What are your thoughts on the brewery? Oh, one of the better barrel-aged beers I've had is like, yes, Mount Rushmore Sand is very, very close. I've just had so many, it probably just keeps it off. It's deserving, though. Let's put it that way. Brewery. What are your thoughts? Where were they when you first got into beer? Where are they now? And how have they scaled for you? Are they still one of the upper echelon, especially when it comes to barrel aging program? Let me know. Have you had Melange number three? Have you had old Melange number three? Have you had this particular iteration year of Melange number three? Have you had it recently? Have you had it old? I want to know all your thoughts about the brewery, your thoughts about the, their beers, what they do, this beer, if you've had it, and everything else down there. We're done. Hopefully you guys enjoyed our review. Hope to see you next time. Cheers, y'all.